everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kayla Roach, and today I'm going to be showing you how I created this beautiful crested gecko vivarium. So this vivarium measures 18 by 18 by 36 inches and it houses this little gecko here who is a demon. He's crazy, but I still love him despite his not so favorable personality. Since this is a previously used terrarium, I will be cleaning the glass with the Exoterra Terrarium Glass Cleaner. This will help remove any hard water stains and it will give me a clean surface to work on. Now I'm playing around with a few different types of wood that I'll be using for my hardscape until I get a layout that I'm pleased with. In order to adhere the hardscape to the back of the terrarium and to give my background a textured appearance, I will be using the Great Stuff Pond and Stone Spray Foam. This foam is safe for animals and it is waterproof once it is cured. Now that the spray foam has cured, I'm using a blade to carve away the outer layer of foam. This step is tedious, but it is very important because it'll allow the silicone to better adhere to the foam. The inner layer of foam is very porous and has a texture similar to that of a sponge. This will allow the silicone to seep into those pores and it will create a better bond. This step also gives me the opportunity to customize the background and give it the shape and appearance that I desire. Now that the foam has been carved, it's time to make this look a little more natural. Similar to the spray foam, I will be using a silicone that is safe for animals and it is also waterproof once it has cured. The material I'll be using for my background is peat moss. It's very lightweight and it sticks to the silicone very well. The next step is to coat the foam with a layer of silicone. I'm making a point of getting into every nook and cranny to make sure the peat moss adheres to the entire background. I'm spreading a thick layer of peat moss over the silicone and I'm pressing it down firmly. Now that the silicone is dry, I'm brushing away any excess peat moss. By brushing away the excess peat moss, I'm able to see any areas that may need some more and I can patch those up accordingly. Next, I will be applying moss to the background. This will make it look more natural and it will also create a nicer transition between the hardscape and the peat moss. I'm also applying moss where the background meets the glass. I find that this looks a lot cleaner and the edges don't look so rough. Once the silicone is dry, I'm going in with a blade to remove any excess silicone on the glass. Since the spray foam is visible in this cork tube, I decided to stuff it with some sphagnum moss in order to conceal it. Next, I will be using Hydraton to create a drainage layer. The drainage layer functions as a retreat for any excess water coming from the overlying soil. 
I will be using fiberglass mesh screen in order to create a barrier between the hydroton and the soil. This will prevent the substrate from falling into the drainage layer. I will be creating my own substrate blend and the first ingredient will be horticultural wood charcoal. Charcoal is a great addition to soil and it carries many benefits, some of which include better drainage, more nutrients for the plants, and even odor elimination. For the soil, I'm using a blend of about 60% peat moss and 40% black earth. I'm also including a relatively small amount of play sand as this will help aerate the soil. The next ingredient will be ground coconut husk fiber. This is part of the Exoterra Equatorial Forest Floor Substrate. Next, I will be adding the Exoterra substratum. This is a volcanic substrate which is highly nutritious and I have found that it is incredible for plant growth. So I include it in all my substrate blends. In regards to the microfauna I'll be using, I decided to go with dwarf white isopods and springtails. Now for my favorite part of the entire process, which is planting the enclosure. The first plant I'll be using is a Schifflera, also known as the umbrella plant. In order to create a sense of uniformity in this vivarium, I decided to add another Schifflera to the other side of the enclosure. The next plant I'll be including is a Fetonia, or more commonly known as the nerve plant. I absolutely love the way that this plant looks in Vivaria. The next plant I'm incorporating is a Ficus pumila, which is also known as the creeping fig. Next, I'm using a type of horticultural wire to fix some strands of the Ficus pumila to the background. To do so, I cut a small piece of the wire, bent it in half, and pierced it into the foam background in order to anchor some pieces of the plant in place. Now that I've established a general layout of the plants in this vivarium, I'm going in with more hardscape to give my crested gecko more climbing opportunities. I'm scattering a few pieces of cork bark over the substrate. This will serve as a retreat for the microfauna. While I was working on the bottom portion of this vivarium, I decided I needed more plants, so I included a pothos cutting and a species of peperomia. Next, I'll be dispersing a generous layer of leaf litter above the substrate. This will serve as shelter and nutrition for the microfauna. I decided to use artificial vines to give my gecko more climbing opportunities and to add more complexity to the overall look of the enclosure. Since these are artificial vines, I decided to stick some sphagnum moss in them in order to break up the appearance and make it look more natural. In terms of lighting, I'm using an LED bar in order to maximize the plant's ability to thrive. And I'm also using a UVB bulb, which is more catered towards my gecko. I believe that exposure to UVB is beneficial to all animals, as long as they have areas in their enclosure where they can escape from it. As a last minute finishing touch, I decided to include a bromeliad. In order to mount this bromeliad, I will be using soft horticultural wire in order to wrap the roots in sphagnum moss and then mount it to a piece of hardscape in the enclosure. He's so mean.
Ow. Bro. <laughs> okay. And with that attitude, here's your, your new home. So yeah, this is Groot. He is uh, not your usual crested gecko. He's quite aggressive per se, but he has really nice structure. Look at him. Look at that head structure. Are you done? Yeah. There's your new house. You grumpy boy. He's like, I want more blood. <laughs> So that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something or just enjoyed the process. And I hope you got a little giggle out of seeing Groot, my crazy crested gecko, being rehoused into this enclosure. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think he enjoys it as well. If you're interested in seeing more future builds like this one, please consider subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Kayla's.Critters. I post about all my reptiles there on a daily basis. I'm very active there so you can really stay engaged with me and my animals. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.